so we've got a lot actually of news coming out of the tech sector, um, which you know they've been there have been tons of layoffs, and now the very latest. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. Is that Meta is facing a um, large fine in the EU? Uh, this New York Times article says Meta's ad practices were ruled illegal under EU law. So that decision includes a fine of 390 million euros. That's about $414 million. And it has the potential to require Meta to make some really costly changes to their advertising-based business in the European Union. That's one of its largest markets. So the EU passed this regulation with regards to data privacy, giving users more control over how their data can be used, what can be collected, who it can be sent to. And these regulators uh, basically looked at Meta's policy and said, you are not giving users the power and the control that this law uh, dictates you must give. Now, why does this matter? Ultimately, it's, you know, the fine is a hefty amount of money, but they could, they could stomach that. The problem is that it really cuts to the core of their advertising business. I mean, a huge percentage of both Facebook and Instagram revenue comes from the ability to serve people these personalized ads based on farming all of their data. So if you are now saying you can't really do that anymore, you have to give users a clear way to opt out of having this data collected and sold to third-party providers and used for this ad program, that could take a significant chunk out of their revenue and their profitability. So Meta has three months to outline how they're going to comply with this ruling. The decision doesn't specify specifically what they have to do, but again, it could result in Meta allowing users to choose whether they want their data used for such targeted promotions. And if a large number say no, that would cut off one of the most valuable parts of Meta's business. Um, we have some numbers here. The, those practices helped Meta generate $118 billion in revenue in 2021. So number one, you know, this is, this is a real business issue for them. Number two, EU regulators have come under a lot of fire for, you know, they, they have this, this rule, this law, this regulation in place, but they haven't really enforced it. This is one of the first big examples where they're actually cracking down. And, you know, it we should have we don't have anything like this in the U.S. that gives uh, customers and users here a similar level of control over their data. And I think it would really be a benefit here as well. Well, it's really interesting to see exactly why and what it means, because we put this together with a bunch of other different elements, because it is a bad time just for the American tech sector writ large. The meta is having problems, not only on the business side, we shouldn't forget, they've had two subsequent quarters of down growth, largely due to actually less active users on the platform than ever before and pouring billions and billions of advertising dollars from the profitable part into VR with a major bet on the metaverse. It hasn't materialized yet. You know, I, I get you'd have to sell a hell of a lot of Oculuses or whatever the hell they're mm -hmm. called now in order to make all of that up. Now, that means that their core business is not doing as well. They've got a big bet, which is more of like a decade long thing, but they're not necessarily it's working out for them. At the same time, revenue itself across the entire industry is down in almost every single sector. You know, you pulled this one, Crystal, let's put it up there on the screen. Salesforce, the, uh, the sales tracking technology, they're cutting 10% of their entire staff and actually downsizing their location at the you know classic Salesforce tower in San Francisco. Why does this matter? Salesforce itself is like the back-end system for a hell of a lot of business activity. So if you have less business activity in the overall economy, that means you're going to have less use of the Salesforce platform, which means they get less revenue, which and less fees, which means that they have to go ahead and fire people. But then second and third over here, what I think is even probably the most important was Amazon with the news that broke last night. Let's put this up there. They are now laying off 17,000 workers which is actually more than they had initially scheduled for layoffs. So to have to lay off actually over 18,000 workers now, the number has been updated, to have almost 18,000 represents like 5%, it says, of the elements of its workforce and about 1% of the overall 1.5 million employees. So on the one hand, it may not sound like a lot, but Amazon, because it is the second largest employer in the entire United States, has a far disproportionate impact in terms of how people look over the economy, how exactly, you know, what the job market looks like in, uh, you know, in more down market areas of the country, just because unfortunately, it's one of the only places that still employs a lot of people. 
And you put this all together, it's not setting 2023 up for a good, you know, boom, quote unquote, especially because tech makes up so much of the S&P 500 indexes and other stock market retirement funds um, and other, et cetera. It's actually disproportionately weighted in how we think about the U.S. economy because it was the biggest driver from over the last 20 years. Overall, I think all of this just paints a really dim picture for tech um, going into 2023. Oh, no doubt about it. And, you know, the economy continues to be very uneven. These mass tech layoffs, which is not just Salesforce and Amazon, but really company after a large company in the sector, which, you know, what happened is during the pandemic, people are at home. So they're using, they're on Zoom, they're buying on Amazon, their, you know, Salesforce became more important. All of these tech companies became super critical to the uh, work at home economy during the pandemic. Now that people are back out and about, um, they've taken a hit. Many of them have admitted, Mark Benioff, the uh, CEO of Salesforce, for example, admitted they staffed up too quickly. I love the way that these like, you know, <laughs> CEO types can just be like, oops, my bad, sorry guys, now I gotta lay off tens of thousands of you, but that's the way that they ultimately yeah. roll. So um, you have these huge layoffs across the tech sector. You have their stock prices taking a huge hit. And the tech sector has basically you know, really driven the sort of upper middle class. Um, so when you have that group of society no longer really safe in the way that they were, but on the other hand, you have a different dynamic um, among service sector workers, where a lot of those uh, place retailers, uh, you know, hospitality, those that sector, they're struggling to get workers. They're still having to compete. Now, listen, let's be clear: with inflation, people are still getting pay cuts. But workers actually have a little more power in the service sector economy than they did previously. So. The combination of those two trends is really remaking the economy overall, and I think is going to be one of the big trends of 2023 to follow in the impact that has on inequality, on the impact that has on the job market, on the impact that has to low-wage workers, the middle class, the upper middle class. Um, you know, these these things are just starting to shake out because those Amazon layoffs, the 18,000 plus, are predominantly white-collar workers. Um, you know, these are quote-unquote knowledge economy workers. This was the thing that our whole economy has been built on for several decades now, starting with Bill Clinton. The fact that they're taking hit by tens of thousands of workers is going to have a huge impact with big ripple effects that I think we're only just beginning to wrap our head around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's just no way to, to we just have to consider like how much tech has basically dominated the U.S. economy since what, the 90s or yeah. really with the dot com bubble and onward. And then think about what, especially with zero interest rates going away, what that entire industry looks like. So, you know, look, it'll be an interesting year. Uh, I've, I've learned not to make any predictions. Uh, yeah. Let's just leave it at that. Bottom line, maybe okay. don't learn to code. Right. Yeah, maybe don't. Or maybe do. <laughs> maybe don't learn uh, to code. You know, it could pay off. <laughs> Could pay off in the future. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent working only for you.